live. Hooray. Okay. So, oh, right. Uh, that was weird. It didn't work the first time. So I apologize that we are a minute late. Anyway. Hi friends. Uh, good to see y'all. Happy March. Um, yeah, that, that went by fast because February was a real, real slow month. Hey, there's WS Rain. Hi. I'm so glad you're able to make it today. Yay. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't actually check to see if there was lipstick on my teeth. So, <gasps> okay, great. Um, professional hazard. So anyway, um, hi friends. I'm basically just going to babble for a few minutes while we wait for people to join us. Um, yeah. So let's see here. I actually wrote down notes because on like what to babble about, because I'm just that kind of a little bit nutty. So, uh, yeah. So let's see here. Um, and then, of course, if you have any extra questions, just put them in the little, uh, you can just put them in the chat, the Q&A section, whatever. I'm not picky. I'm, I'm not going to try to, like, make this super fancy. Um, but, yeah, so anyway, rambling topics while we wait for people to start coming in. So I actually went out yesterday, which was amazing. I mean, I go out for the grocery store job, but um, that's a little bit different. Like, it's a very controlled environment. This was, like, out into the world, which I just don't really do. Um so yeah, basically, uh, went to a meadery, um, which apparently we have here in Nashville, who knew? Um, and we like kind of met with some friends, but of course, like there was distance. Um, but we haven't seen these friends in real life for a while. So like we went, we all kind of bought ourselves mead, um, also got some sushi cause delicious. Um, uh, yeah, so did that. And one of the meads was delicious and the other one tasted the way a barn smells. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it than that. It's like licking a dr the inside of a dry barrel. Um, I mean, a clean barn, but still not my favorite flavor, to be honest. Um, SW Rain is asking, how was my week? It was excellent. Thank you very much. I'm going to be talking about some of that in a little bit. So thank you. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, sushi. Um, SW Rain talking about how uh, she loves sushi because it is delicious. Um and y'all feel free to feel free to like talk about what like the foods you love, whether sushi or otherwise in there. I personally really like um, <laughs> I, I like very uh, simple sushi, basically like fried shrimp. Heck yes. Avocado. Yes, please. Cream cheese. Not traditional sushi, I realize, but it is delicious. So, yeah, so I got some of that um, and it was a new sushi place to me and it was oh my gosh it was so good definitely gonna go back there they also have ramen which i freaking love ramen so i shall be trying that next time um but yeah and then i actually booked travel accommodations today which is weird and terrifying and exciting um so basically uh teslacon is in november which i tried for two years to get into and i finally did and then covid hit um, yeah, so that was disappointing, but I am in for this year, which is very exciting. Um, and I booked my accommodations today. We'll see if stuff still happens. Of course, that's all like still really up in the air, but I am really excited. Man, do I want to go? Um, but of course only if it's safe. So we'll have to see how that all plays out, but I'm really excited. And it was, it was really fun and weird to book travel accommodations again. Um, S.W. Rain has said that, they, that she is addicted to tempura California rolls. I, I do love a t uh, California roll as long as they leave out the cucumber because I have a deep, deep hatred of cucumber. I find it vile. I know a lot of people really love it and find it refreshing, but like eight of my taste buds do not get along. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of the rambly bit. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and get started on other stuff happening. So first of all, of course, I must show off what I'm drinking. The cup is still very hot. I just made this like minutes ago. So this is my tea. You can see it's very, it's very green tea. Um, so this is Gen Mai and my cup. I came, I saw, I made it awkward, which is basically my whole life. <gasps> Murky Master, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I was just showing off my delicious, amazing tea cup. So as I said, this is Gen Mai. It's very very green and it is very, very delicious. I love green tea, especially since I don't have to put any sweetener in it to kind of bear it. There are some black teas I don't have to put sweetener in as well, but there is something about like a nice black tea that you've put a sweetener in with some milk, very British application. And you just, you drink and you're like, oh my goodness, that's the best thing ever. Thank you. Um, but a green tea is just, I just love it. Um, 
Yes. So also Murky Master has also heard of Gen Mai. Oh, just seriously, it's so good. I This is actually the last of it in my house, so I've got to get some more. Um, definitely totally open to any tea brand recommendations for good Gen Mai because it's kind of hard to find. Um, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, so what was I saying? Um, oh yeah, so uh, this is the last of it. Got to have the complimentary or the uh, obligatory tea slurp. So yeah, it's just, oh my gosh. I love I love a good green tea that's brewed well. Because, you know, you can burn them, which is not very nice. Um, but man, when it's when it's brewed well, a nice green tea. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so good. Um, it's just delicious. Gen Mai has like that kind of like toasty, nutty flavor of, um, there's like toasted rice in it. And it's just, oh my gosh, it's so, so good. I feel like that just like, takes the green tea up a notch so yeah so there's that um also in other news hang on i have to i have to prepare for this news this is very exciting um so i finished my first edit pass on my current work in progress <laughs> must have a kazoo always keep his kazoo on hand for celebrations um i'm so excited like i've i've cried a lot behind the scenes on this book um I thought it was going to be an easy mode book and it's turning out to be a little bit harder, um, but not in like a bad way. It's just there are some things that need to be handled well. Um, but no, so I finished the first edit pass and I'm so excited, which was what the sushi this week uh, was about. I always reward myself with sushi and bubbly. So the meadery that um, I mentioned we went to, um, the mead that I got is a is a sparkly kind, which I didn't even know there was sparkling mead, but there you go. And it was delicious. Um, with my sushi, so tasty. Um, so yeah, that's my that's how I celebrate uh, whenever I have like a writing achievement, some sushi and some bubbly. It's just, you know, it's how I like to live. So yeah, so I did that. Yay, I'm so excited. Now, of course, I have to start the next edit pass, um, but that's okay. That's, that's a problem for tomorrow, Dana. Um, and then I think after that, thankfully this one, I don't think I'm gonna have to like, you know how on the first edit pass, like you just go through the entire thing. I think this one I can do a little bit more like kind of spot checky. Um, thank you, SW Rain, for the woohoo. I really appreciate it. It's it's a big deal. It's seriously like if you know if you like any writers in your life, like, you know, it's it's a whole process and they definitely deserve some a little bit of praise for all that work. So if you know some writers in your life, you you go ahead and give them a pat on the back. Um so anyway, as I was saying. Um, I'm going to start the second edit pass tomorrow. Um, and I think I'll be able to kind of spot edit that one a little bit, uh, a little bit more anyway than I was this one. This one just, <laughs> it was a hot mess. It just needed an entire overhaul. I mean, it's still a bit of a hot mess. Um, but you know, like I now, I now have a much better idea of a lot of things in that book. Um, like some people change genders entirely. Uh, just, yeah. So just, just, it was a hot mess. It was, a, it was a lot. Um, but yeah, so very exciting. Uh, I also, I haven't been reading a ton lately, but I, um, did read Poison or Protect by Gail Carriger, my favorite author of all time. She's just amazing. So, um, and I was actually, uh, this was going to be a March TBR uh, read, <laughs> except I started reading it at the very end of February and then finished it the same day. So technically one of February's TBR reads. Um, but yeah, but I, it was, it was so good. Oh my gosh. Everything she writes is just amazing. Um, but I have some other books that I am hoping to read, uh, this month. It may not happen. I mean, what are we already on the 21st? Um, so it's probably not going to happen, but I'm close to halfway, done with Waters of Salt and Sin by Alicia Clafique. Um, she's also she's also a Nashville author, which is very exciting. And um, she is also a, a writing friend, acquaintance. It's one of those things where you're like, we know each other, we're friendly. Um, so yeah, I don't know if she would consider me like a friend, but I make friends very easily. So I would consider her a friend. Um, but anyway, so I am about halfway through reading this right now. She's amazing. The world building in this is phenomenal. It's really thoughtful. Um, and she very clearly like has thought through the wider implications of various things in the world. She does a really good job of like weaving the things that are different about this world, um, weaving those things into um, her world really seamlessly. 
So it's not just sort of like dropped in randomly and being like, why are we focusing on this right now? It's just, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. The world building is fantastic. Um, so that is Waters of Salt and Sin by Alicia Clafique. It's an uncommon world novel. Um, and then I hope to read these two guys. Um, it's another Gail Carriger novel. Huge surprise. Um, Defy or Defend, which I think is just going to be delightful. And then um, I'm covered in books now. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's see. Within the Sanctuary of Wings by Marie Brennan. Um, and if you guys have not read the series, it's amazing. So basically Victorian era steampunk stuff, but with dragons. Ah, dragons. So yeah, um, it's just amazing. The first in the series is called um, A Natural History of Dragons. And I just, I love it. I can't recommend it enough. Um, looking at some of the comments here, Murky Master has said that he's reading, let's see, they are reading A Knight of the Black Rose by James Loder to prepare uh, for their Ravenloft game in June. Oh yeah, Ravenloft is coming out in the D&D world. That is exciting. That's awesome. I hope it's, I hope it's fantastic, Murky Master. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the reading world right now. Uh, I'm going to take a little bitty tea break here. Mm. That Gen Mai is just amazing. I love it so much. Um, and then I'm going to start doing a new thing since we're talking about books. Um, I'm going to start doing a book recommendation every month as well. I'm also going to move this slightly. I feel like you guys are not quite um, at the level that I want you guys at. Okay, this is just like if we're on a boat and the ship is rocking at this point. Um, yeah, okay, that's just going to have to do. Anyway, so I want to start doing a book recommendation for every month. I'm not really a mood reader, like, oh, it's spring, I'm going to read this book or whatever. But you know, some people are, so I wanted to go ahead and do kind of a springy book. Um, so right here, I'm going to recommend for March, Chalice by Robin McKinley. I adore this book. It is beautiful. Robin McKinley does things with words that I could probably never hope to. She just makes, creates these amazing, like, scenic descriptions, and it's beautiful. Um, I just absolutely love her writing. Um, and Chalice is, it's really interesting. It's kind of like a superhero book, but like in kind of this old timey fantasy style. So basically um, in here, the the main character, she is kind of bestowed with these powers. There's, there's a chalice position um, that kind of is passed from person to person and they never know who's going to be the next chalice when the old one dies. Um, so she just gets these, um, she just gets these abilities and she kind of has to just figure out how to use her new superpowers for lack of a better word. And it's just beautiful. And so like all of her power kind of um, comes from honey and the bees that she keeps and whatnot. And it's just gorgeous. Um, Brian Aiello joined. Hello, Brian. Thanks for joining today. Um, so yeah, that's my book recommendation for March. It's very springy. It's beautiful. There's a ton of honey and honey is delicious. So yeah, that is, that is March's book recommendation from me. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the thing I'm going to start doing on a monthly basis now during these IG lives. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any book recommendations that you think work well for a certain month, feel free to always like drop that in my Instagram comments or anything like that. So yeah. And then moving on to our novelty section. Um, so I, I've mentioned before I'm using food um, as kind of like a way to keep novelty in my life during these times where we're not really able to get out very much. So I mentioned last time that I had plans to make a spicy chicken and peanut stew kind of thing. Uh, you serve it over rice, rice rather. It comes from, I believe, Ghana. Um, and it was, it was good. It was pretty good. Um, it had an extremely strong uh, peanut flavor, which I like peanut butter a lot, but I did get tired of it after a while because I was the only one in my house eating it. So I was eating it a lot. Um, the hus hubs does not really like peanut butter, so it was not really his dish. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to try. I did, I did, was successful in not making it too spicy because, you know, your girl is a little baby when it comes to spice. Um, so yeah, so that was, that was an interesting experience. I don't think I'd make it again, but you know, if you are a fan of peanut butter and a fan of, um, Ghanaian food, then there you go. 
Uh, let's see here. So I also uh, made, I mentioned also in the last one that I was going to be making a garlicky shrimp and broccoli over rice dish, um, which I also made. Uh, sadly, it, it kind of wasn't that flavorful though. Like I really expected a lot of flavor um, from the ingredients. I like followed the recipe and everything, but it was, I mean, it was fine. It's shrimp and broccoli, which is hard to go wrong with. Um, but yeah, it just didn't really impress, unfortunately. Uh, but that's okay. Not every recipe can. And then I have had some successes though. So I did a thing recently um, where I tried an experiment in making a quiche. Um, I really love a quiche. It's a really good way to use up eggs, especially if you have a lot of eggs around like I currently do. Um, but I hate working with gluten-free pie crust. Gluten-free pie crust is terrible. It's just, it's such a pain to work with. So I did like um, hash brown shreddings over the bottom of the um, of the dish and then kind of pressed it down a little bit, par cooked it in the oven and then did my quiche over like this potato-y hash browny shreddings kind of thing. And it turned out great. Like I had all my little bits and bobs from the fridge that needed to get used up. Um, I sort of sauteed those. There was a tomato in there. There was some chicken. There was a leek. Um, saute those up, put them in and then cover with cheese and quiche stuff. It was delicious. You guys, I'm really, really proud. Um, I wish I had a recipe for you to share, but it was one of those things where it was like, I'm going to try a thing and hopefully it doesn't, it doesn't suck. And it didn't. So that was great. Um, and then finally, when it comes to adding novelty into your life with food. Um, there's a new show on Netflix called Nadia Bakes. This is Nadia Hussein from uh, Great British Bake Off, I think season six, and I love her. I adore her to pieces. And so the Nadia Bakes um, is just, it's so good. And it's not all sweet stuff. She also has some savory stuff, including a um, like a baked teriyaki noodle thing. Um, Murky Master is mentioning that the... Uh, the, the quiche, actually Murky Master and SW Rain are talking about how the quiche sounds really good. I assume you're talking about the quiche anyway. Um, but yeah, no, it was super good. Um, uh, so Murky Master is actually one of my one of my Discord peoples because uh, they're a Patreon supporter. Um, and that's just the $1 Patreon level subscriber. So if you want to get in on that Discord action, um, $1 a month will get you in on that on my Patreon. And then I will actually... Um, I'll try to put together like a recipe or something in there to put in there. Um, so yeah. And then also the, the Nadia bakes, uh, recipe, I'll put that in the show notes and in the discord as well. Cause that is a recipe that's actually written down. So yeah, but it's like a baked, uh, teriyaki noodle thing. You kind of just put everything in a pan, put it in the oven. It bakes, you've got noodles, you've got chicken, teriyaki sauce. It looks delicious. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll share all that and whatnot. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate that. I was I was very proud because I had no idea how that was going to turn out and it was great. Um, so yeah, here we go. Uh, right. So that's kind of all. Oh wait, no, that's not all the things. Um, so one more thing before we get to the Q&A section that I really want to share. And this is for my writing peoples. This is for my D&D peoples. Um, I just got this better backstories. Okay. I realize that is backwards and I apologize. Um, maybe there's a way I can, is that, is that still backwards? Yep. It's still backwards. Um, I think that's just how Instagram live works. It reverses everything, but anyway, better backstories by who's the creator's name. Uh, let's see. I wrote it down. Jay Stillipek is the creator of this. And it's just, it's really cool for character creation. Um, so there's a, I got the, the big bundle box. And there's a ton of these cards in here. So you've got all of these cards and each one has like, like landmark icons, um, kind of like symbols on them for, um, the kind of, kind of thing that your character could be going through. Like it's, it's actually fairly in depth and then it's got options for like what your character details about your character. So this is legacy again. I know you can't read it that easily cause it's backwards. I apologize. But like legacy there, if I can get it in focus. Um, so yeah, so legacy, uh, you have taken on someone else's dream. So like maybe uh, a parent or uh, a child, your best friend who died in battle, all these kind of things. Um, so you've kind of taken on what was their goal for yourself. And then you've got like up in the corner, like these little symbols to kind of give you an idea of like 
weather conditions and there's there's just a whole whole mess of stuff in here which is really really cool for character building like i said whether that's for D or for um for writing characters which i think is really helpful especially if you've just got like i know this character like i kind of know like their personality but what about those like tricky little like background details because the thing is like this doesn't have to be um this doesn't have to be like the quest for your character this could also be, for instance, um, like you just you just had need like a side character with some kind of like interesting little quirk. Ta-da! Now you have some. Um, so yeah, these are great. And I will say they also um, they come in like an e version, and then they come in like the physical version. Um, so the e version is a lot cheaper since obviously you're not paying for a physical item. Um, and by the way, like I'm not paid to say this these nice things. These are just things I think are really great and cool, um, and I like to share the love. So there we go. Um, so yeah, so Better Backstories by Jay Stillapeck um, is the creator. So yeah, that's pretty exciting. Thought I would share that with you guys. All right, so here we go. So now we are on to the, uh, nope, I'm not gonna be able to get that closed. I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> uh, so now we're gonna get into the Q&A section. Oh, uh, Murky Master, great question. As we get into the Q&A section, awesome timing. Uh, so basically the, the deck, um, this was, I believe it was like $36, um, but the little e-versions that you can print off yourself, I think that's only like 12, if I remember correctly. I could have that slightly wrong, but it was considerably, um, considerably cheaper. I don't even want to say less expensive because it's not that expensive, but hey, you know, like $24 is a big difference for some people. Um, it's, that's no, it's not small, t small potatoes. Uh, so yeah, so like $12 for the, the ones that you print yourselves. Um, so yeah, and they're really great. They're really well put together. I love them. Yeah. And I, um, I also want to say to my, my writer friends or anybody who does D and D is kind of like a side hustle. This is a business expense. You can put this on your taxes. At least that's what I'm doing. I'm not a lawyer. Like you can't take my advice as like proper legal advice. I'm just saying I definitely see this personally as a business tool and I shall be putting it on my taxes because again, I'm going to be using this to write characters for books. So there you go. Again, I'm not a lawyer. Don't like take me as like proper legal advice, but anyway, just a little FYI. So, you know, all right. So uh, question and answer section, um, feel free to put that in the, um, either in the chat or the Q&A section that's somewhere at the bottom of this. Either way, I'm not going to be picky. Um, so yeah, and I have some some ones that people have already submitted. So thank you so much to all those folks. I'm going to just go ahead and read their names now so I don't forget. Um, we have Pacific NW Author, uh, who submitted questions. SW Rain, who's here with us. Thank you so much. Um, and then Murky Master also, thank you so much, who's here with us. Thank you for um, kind of pre putting forth some questions. And then also um, DJ Gray, I got some good questions from her as well, who's not here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get those thank yous out of the way right now. Thank you all very, very much. I love these questions. Um, I will say I tried not to pregame them as always too much. I like to give pretty candid answers. Um, but of course, while I'm copying and pasting into my page of notes, I do see them and the answers do start to sprout up in my mind a little bit. Um, so yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and get started at the top of my list, um, is Pacific NW author's question, which is, will you be writing any more books in the out of the shadow series? And I am so excited to be sharing. Yes. Yes, I will. In fact, I have a rough draft of one already done. Um, I wrote that last year during NaNoWriMo. Um, and Ooh, how much do I want to reveal? Let's see. Um, I will tell you that it is set in the same world. It is set pretty much after the events of, well, pretty much immediately after the events of Across the Ice. So it's, it's not a continuing part of Lenore's storyline, but it does happen subsequently to the wrap up of her storyline. Um, and I can also tell you that that new book that I have the rough draft for um, is a very, very smooshy little romance. It's adorable. And uh, yeah, because I need happy books right now. So I am writing happy books. And it's just, I'm not going to tell you who's in it yet. I can tell you, though, um, 
it is a character that has played a part in the other books uh, to varying important degrees. So have fun trying to figure that out. Um, and in, in coming months, I will be revealing more about that book. But I'm really excited about it. It's just a little bit too early for me to like go whole hog and like really talk about it. Um, I've got to get the edits done on the other uh, work in progress first and then get that off to my critique partners and once I start editing the uh, the Broken Gears book I will start talking about it more um, but yes there will be more and I'm very excited I can t also I will also say I am hoping for a release like maybe early next year of it Pff, will that actually happen I'm not sure but I really hope so I would love for like a release this year but I just don't think it's going to happen um, I, I just produce really slowly so, but I'm excited about it. It's going to be great. So let's see here. All right. Next up, I've got uh, the questions from SW Rain. Thank you again for like, kind of pre-inputting those. That makes life so easy. Um, oh, and SW Rain also says that she's so excited for the next Broken Gears book. Oh, I am too. I think it's going to be great. I'm so excited. Um, so yeah. So, and there's, a, there's several here from SW. So I'm just going to go right on down. I used to kind of like jump around, but I think, I think just for ease, I'm just going to go right through them. So first question, tea break, is where would you love to travel to? Oh my gosh, there's so many places. Um, I would absolutely love to travel to Ireland. I've never been. I've been to England multiple times, but I've never actually been to Ireland. Same with Scotland. I'd love to go there. Um, I really love um, kind of the... Uh, like Anglo culture. I love the food. I love all of it. Um, let's see. I don't know if we're talking about new places to travel to that I've never been before, or if we're just talking about places in general. So um, places that, another place that I have, have been before, um, Bavaria, area of Germany. I've got a friend who lives there and she is delightful. Um, I went to Bavaria, not August last year, but the August previous, and it was beautiful. Oh my gosh. Like Germany was amazing and the food was brilliant. I love it. Um, I've never been to Italy though. I would love to go to Italy. Um, man, again, food. I'm extremely food driven, you guys, okay? <laughs> I know this about myself. Um, so yeah, I would love to go to Italy. Um, there's a lot of places in Europe I would really love to go. I do also kind of want to go to Australia, but I'm also afraid Australia will kill me. Uh, so... <laughs> I feel like I would need somebody with me to like hold my hand and make sure that Australia doesn't doesn't accidentally kill me or maybe purposely kill me. I don't know. Um, SW Rain says that Ireland is amazing. So I guess you've been and that's amazing. That's brilliant. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, I just everything I hear about Ireland just sounds beautiful. Um, oh, no. Murky Master is asking if I've ever been to Spain, which no, I have not. I would love to go to Spain, though. That's another great one. Um, I am actually in the process of learning Spanish, so hopefully I'd even be able to, like, get along and speak the language. Maybe. Hopefully. I mean, right now I'm only at the level of, like, the the boss has two desks in the office or th something like that. Uh, so not, like, great Spanish speaking, but I'm, I'm trying, okay? I am learning and it's gonna be great. Yeah, so Spain is definitely on my list. I would love to go there. Um, let's see... Let's see, let's see. Uh, next up, uh, let's see. So I know I've said let's see like four times. I repeat myself a lot. I say um a lot. I know that's not good public speaking practice, but you know what? I am not a great public speaker and I've never claimed to be. So, oh well, anyway. Um, next next question from SW Rain is, what are some of your favorite names for characters? Ooh, good question. Like I said, a lot of these I didn't even look at because I was just like, put them in order, put them in the notes, done and done. Favorite names for characters. Um, I, again, I'm not sure if this is for characters that I already have names for, or if I, if they're like character names that I haven't used yet. Um, so, I mean, I love the name Lenore because Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> um, I do really like making up all of the criminal names in the Broken Gears world. Like Chrysalis was really fun. Chrysalis has like a lot of hidden meaning behind um behind her name and i have i had a lot of fun with that one kind of trying to come up with that fetch too just all all of the criminal names the little like monikers and stuff are 
they're really fun. They're really, really fun because they all like kind of have some kind of hidden meaning behind them that usually never makes it onto the page. Um, but they're just, they're really fun to think of. Um, I also do have a file that I keep names that I really like. I, I am a fan of like the um, sort of that Dickensian tradition of kind of funny sounding names or just names that are just, you know, they're, they're just a little bit silly. Um, so, oh, you know what? I can tell you in the new, in the new book um, that will be coming out at some point uh, next year or something. Uh, there is a character called Mrs. Spoondoddle, which is just one of those names that just are like popped up in my head. And I was like, that's an adorable name. I am going to put that in here. So yeah, I just, I do really like like little like portmanteau names. Um, and I like nicknames a lot. Maybe it's because I never really had a nickname growing up. Um, but yeah, I, I like those sort of names. Um, Kieran is also a favorite name. I just, I just really like his name. I don't know why. Just do. Uh, let's see here. Have you ever been on any literary pilgrimages? Oh, interesting. Um, I think one, and that is going to Jane Austen's house in England. Again, that was on the trip summer before last. And it, honestly, I almost started crying. <laughs> um, going to Jane Austen's house was just incredible. She is like one of my favorite authors of all time. Like there's actually a Jane, Aust Jane Austen quote in my little necklace here. She's incredible. Um, so going to her house was really interesting. I had got about a bajillion pictures of her little writing desk um, that they have set up there, like next to a window in her house. I got it like the picture from like every angle. Um, it was just, it was really cool. And they have letters or at least like, um, like copies of letters that she wrote to her sister, Cassandra in um in the house and she talks about pride and prejudice like her baby that she got from london and stuff just oh my gosh like that was the part where i was just like i feel you jane i know like when you hold that book in your head for the first time i understand that feeling like i am connected to you it was just incredible um honestly i wish we could have spent three whole days there just like looking at every little nook and cranny and stuff it was it was incredible um so yeah, that was, that's probably the only, I would say like literary pilgrimage I've been on. I, I there are a lot of places I would love to go. Um, but honestly, like a lot of times when I travel, I don't, well, at least when I travel for work, I don't really get to like explore. Um, but I would, I would love to go on more. There's, I think there are a bunch up in the like Northeast of the U S that would be really cool to visit. Um, I actually did grow up really near Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I grew up in Northern Virginia, but I didn't honestly, like, I didn't really do any of like the Poe tours or anything like that, which I wish I had. Um, I don't think I realized when I was younger and living in that area that that was a thing. So maybe one day since it is, it is a hop, skip and a jump from where my parents lived. So yeah, hopefully one day. Um, let's see here. Next question. What was your favorite book when you were little? Ooh, this is a good one. I don't, oh gosh, let me think. Oh man, I think like, like anytime I probably went through phases, um, when I was like little, little, like before I could read, uh, my parents read to us almost every night. It was, it was a big thing. And that's actually something I look back on and I'm really thankful for, um, is my parents reading to us. I think that was kind of what sparked my love for books in the first place. So when I was like little, little, little before I could, I could even read, um, uh, Where Is My Mother uh, was one of my favorite books. I think that one's Dr. Seuss. Um, it has like that kind of Dr. Seuss look about it, though, if it's not actually by Dr. Seuss. Um, and it was just, it was like really, it kind of really touched me when I was a kid. Like this cute little baby bird was, you know, looking for his mom. And he's like asking all these animals, like, are you my mother and stuff? And then he finds his mother in the end. And sorry, spoilers. Um but yeah, it's just really sweet. When I was a little bit older and I was able to read by myself, um, I really loved Charlotte's Web, which I honestly, I got rid of the copy years ago. I think probably when I was in college and I wish I hadn't, I wish I had more books from, from my childhood. I think a lot of stuff between like going to college and then moving to Nashville and all that stuff. I think a lot of books like got lost in transit or something like that I don't really know my parents were also like moving house 
as I was in the process of like getting ready to graduate college and going through the end of my senior year, my parents like readied their house to be sold. So I think also a lot of my stuff like went with that transition while I wasn't even home. I don't know, like, or those books might be packed up somewhere in my parents' house. They, they have a lot of stuff in their, in their basement. Um, that's all like organized and kept up nice, but like I wasn't there, so I don't know where stuff ended up. So there might be some of my childhood books there. I should honestly look next time I'm there. Um, must write myself a note to remember to do that. So yeah, that was, uh, that'll be, that'll be good to see if maybe any have survived. Um, so yeah, Charlotte's Web. It was a good one. It was really sweet. I actually liked a lot of sad books when I was a kid, now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, Charlotte's Web was really, was really, it was one of those books where like it, it showed me other people, I'm going to go ahead and say, use the word people here because they're characters, um, being kind just to be kind. Um, and it was, I think it was one of those formative things in, in my childhood where I was like, we should be kind to each other. We should be more like Charlotte. Um, so yeah. And then I also really love uh, The Giver by Lois Lowry, which was again, a little bit further on as I was growing up. Um, I think I heard it, I think I heard The Giver the first time in sixth grade. And that book like was one of the most transformative books of my childhood. Um, Cause it, it focuses a lot on the power of choice um, and kind of what happens when choice is taken away from people, when we, um, like there's actually a line in the book where um, the main character is talking to the giver and they're, they're having this crazy conversation of like, imagine if people could, you know, choose their own spouses, wouldn't that be insane? And I like, I look back at that, I actually reread the book like a year ago and I was just like, oh my gosh, this book. This book is incredible. Um, so yeah, and I think that book kind of like quietly spoke to my brain when I was in sixth grade of like, choice is important. Choice is extremely vital to people being able to like, be whole people. Um, so yeah, it was really good. Um, I love that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and SW Rain has said that uh, they read at least two books every night to their son, which is so sweet. I love that you do that because honestly, I think it is a huge, huge, it has a huge impact on children. I don't know if like all children who are read to like continue to be readers. I have no idea if there's data on that. But like I said, I just personally for me, I really think that was a huge part of me becoming a book lover. So I think that's awesome that you do that. Um, so yeah, so The Giver was probably, probably another really, was, definitely is another huge one. Um, all right. So let's see, just checking on our time. Ooh, time is going by very fast. I'm going to have to talk less. Um, we've got about 20 minutes left. Uh, let's see here. So what is your favorite mythological creature? Dragons, hands down dragons. Every time there's a, there are a lot of dragons in this house right up there, for instance. Um, there's also a dragon right here. <laughs> there are dragons everywhere around me. You just can't see them all. So yeah, always dragons every time dragons. That one was, was really easy. Uh, let's see. I've, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. So thank you SW for all of those great questions. Those are really, really good. Thank you. Um, so we're moving on. Um, Murky master also get, had some really good questions. Thank you. Um, so first of all, he asked, uh, what's your favorite Irish food? Um, so that is, let's see. It's a really good question because Irish food is delicious. There's a lot of lamb in Irish food, and I think lamb is delicious. Um, I mean, Irish stew is always amazing. Um, there's a there's actually an Irish pub really near where my parents live that we go to every time I go visit, and they have amazing Irish stew. Um, so that's definitely up there. Um, do you know, I'm not sure I know all of the foods that are specifically Irish as opposed to... Um, as opposed to things that are sort of generally UK type foods. Uh, so yeah, I think, cause I know like bangers and mash is, is like a UK food, but I don't know if that's traditionally Irish as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to investigate this to like kind of see what like some traditional Irish foods are. Now that I'm thinking about it, I realize like, I don't know that much. Um, and actually Murky Master is asking in the chat if I've ever had haggis. I haven't, but I would be willing to try it. I am not afraid to try foods that might on their face seem weird or gross or whatever. I don't think they're weird or gross. I think they're just 
different and not like what we usually would have. So I would happily try haggis. Um, yeah, I would, because it's it's basically just like sheep's sheep stomach, I think oats, some other chopped up meats and stuff like that. Um, Wicked Goblin King has just joined. Hello, Wicked Goblin King. Thank you for so much for joining. Um, yeah, I would I would try haggis totally. That sounds great. So if you know, Murky Master, if you know any good places in the U.S. that do haggis, uh, feel free to let me know because I would I would go for that. I don't know if you can get haggis here because we also have some like weird laws about eating certain animal organs. Um, I only know this because I um, looked at the food stylists from Hannib Hannibal. Yeah, from Hannibal's blog, um, the show Hannibal, I mean, and they talked about how getting like lungs and stuff for the show was difficult um but yeah i would love that um apparently haggis is barley and liver and spices cooked in a sheep stomach yeah that sounds delicious i've had livers before liver is delicious um barley is delicious yeah i would totally try that 100 percent. and speaking of ireland um SW Rain has mentioned that stew was the first meal they had when they got to Dublin and that it was amazing. Oh, I bet it was. That sounds incredible. Um, oh, apparently San Antonio has a Scottish society. Um, I'm guessing they do haggis. I'll have, to, I'll have to look into that. Do I? I don't know if I have any, if I've done any shows in San Antonio. If not, I'd be totally willing to go. I've done them in, in Austin. So, you know, I'll totally travel to Texas for some haggis and shows and things like that. Um... And then Wicked Goblin King is mentioning that they go to a Robert Burns night in January most years where they do, oh, they make like a, like a real haggis and a vegan haggis. That's very interesting. Ooh, that sounds really cool. I'll have to, I'll have to talk to y'all later about that because that sounds brilliant. I, I, you guys, I'm, t I'm usually up for anything food wise. Like I'll try it. Sure. Why not? Um, I'll, I'll go try this like crazy fun adventure thing. Uh, so yeah. Totally. You go for haggis. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to have to do some more research. Maybe that'll be like one of my food novelty things coming up. Like I'll try to do some kind of like traditional Irish dish after I've done a little research to figure out what most traditional Irish dishes are. I've made lamb stew before as well, which was very tasty. Um, so yeah, very cool. Let's see here. Um, I'm curious, Wicked Goblin King, if this Robert Burns night is like here in the Nashville area or if it's maybe in um in your like home home state or somewhere else maybe anyway just let me know so let's see next question uh this is also from murky master thank you very much um how much does luck factor into your work like did you ever get a really awesome idea and just randomly just randomly or were inspired by strange coincidences that turned out to be quite fortunate um that's a great question so and I, I like, I really actually really like the idea of luck. Um, I think luck is one of those things that we can, that is random in the world, but also you can kind of create your own luck in a way. Um, but to, for, first to the question, um, yes, yes, I have. For instance, um, I actually was really inspired for the, um, the first book in the Broken Gear series, um, Out of the Shadows, by a dream. So I had, I'd kind of already like had the idea for the book. I think I might've like had started working on it or it was like, it was very near like the beginning of when I started working on it. And I had this crazy dream, um, that was, that had characters from, um, the Kenny J series by Chris Wooding. Um, and like their, the characters were like running away from, um, from basically the enforcers. Like I now like looking back, like the people they were running from, I know are like were the enforcers. So like this, um, these characters were like running away from the enforcers. It was nighttime. If you've read the beginning of Out of the Shadows, you know, this is very similar to the opening. Um, so yeah, like it was nighttime. Um, and the character from Chris Wooding's series is called Malvery. And he was in my dream. And Malvery was like carrying this woman who like had a hand cut off and like was, it was bleeding and stuff. Um, and so, and that actually became in my, like in, in the series, um, the, the woman who like had lost a hand became Gadget um, from in the, in the Broken Gear series. So yeah, and they like, I could see in the dream 
like the cobblestone streets. I could see like these like tall smushed together buildings of like a very Victorian England-ish area. So that had a huge impact on the the kind of like how the story looked, what the city of Springhaven looked like, all that kind of stuff. And like I said, that was just a dream I had. Um, so yeah, definitely. And I, I do think that um, dreams can absolutely be story inspiration. I mean, dreams are crazy. Dreams, dreams are all kinds of wacky. So, you know, cherry pick that, cherry pick those for real. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else. Um, I don't know. I don't know of any other, or at least I can't think of any other times that I like had an idea. I mean, ideas, ideas are weird. Like where do they even come from? Um, well, I think a lot of my ideas like just kind of hatch out of, out of like either th other things that I read or, um, you know, just things that I'm influenced by. Um, I'll have, I'll just, dis I discussed this on my Patreon a couple of, uh, I think a couple of months ago, but I read an, a, a sociological essay in college called, um, I think it was like the personal hygiene habits of the Nazi Rema or something like that. Um, and Nazi Rema is American backwards. And it was, it kind of took this outsider's view of Americans um, and kind of just all of their various hygiene habits and stuff. Um, but for like written from an entirely outsider's point of view. So it gave it a really interesting perspective. Um, like I said, I linked that in, in my Patreon a couple of months ago. And that actually gave me an idea for the, the book I'm currently working on, um, which has aliens in it. So... Uh, yeah, I think, I think those are like the only examples I can think of, of like luck playing a part in it. Um, I do, I've only got like, I've got like 12 minutes left. So I do want to say too, I do think that people can create their own luck. This idea kind of comes from, uh, Jason Reynolds, who I've seen speak on multiple occasions. He's a, um, like YA and middle grade author and he's fantastic. Um, but Jason Reynolds was kind of talking about how, um, the more chances you take, the more opportunities to get lucky you create for yourself. Um, and this, of course, was talking about like his journey in getting published and things like that. And that's kind of always stuck with me ever since I've heard him say that. It's like this idea of creating your own luck by taking chances because there's like a sportsy term. What is it? You miss every shot you don't take. So kind of along those same lines, like every time you take a take a chance, like you might get lucky. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, oh, and Murky Master's asking what the Chris Wooding series was called. That's the Ketty J series, K-E-T-T-Y-J-A-Y. Um, so, yeah, and apparently there's also a Robert Burns night uh, also in, in San Antonio. That's really cool. Man, there, there's so many more of these I didn't realize. Um, so, yeah, getting lucky. I, I like I like this question a lot. Not not that kind of getting lucky. Um, but anyway. <laughs> uh, and then another question from Murky Master um, was, has a random idea of yours ever turned out to be top of everyone's mind by the time you wrote about it? Yes. Very weirdly, yes. So, um, you know, this past last year, we had um, a lot of uh, the George Floyd was murdered. Um, and then we had the Black Lives Matter protests and things like that. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that happens in Across the Ice that man is similar with like protests being sabotaged and whatnot um, by the um, by white supremacists coming in and kind of sabotaging the protesters and trying to make the protesters look like they were doing all kinds of bad things and whatnot. So yeah, there's some there's some stuff in Across the Ice where that happens. And like I'm not familiar with like protest strategy at all um it just seemed like if you were gonna if you were gonna be a bad person and do something bad and try to like ruin a protest this is how you do it and then oh that's weird um so yeah that 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 coincidence was very strange um my uh my audiobook narrator mentioned that actually when she was doing the audiobook for across the ice she was she mentioned like wow there's some relevant stuff happening in here for everything happening in the world right now. So that was, that was weird and uncanny. So yeah, um, I think that's, that's probably like the, the biggest example I can think of, of that happening. Um, yeah. 
let's see. So, and then uh, DJ Gray um, submitted some questions as well. I don't have time for all of them, but she gave me like a whole slew of them. So that, that's all right. We can, we can save some of these for another day. Um, so one of the questions is, what is a book that you detest that people are surprised by? Um, a book I detest that people are surprised by. The Night Circus. Sorry. I, I will totally admit that The Night Circus is a beautifully written book. And it I love the, the kind of second person perspective you get at parts in that book. It is amazing and beautiful. But honestly, the end really pissed me off. Um, I no spoilers, but a gilded cage is still a cage. So I just, I was really angry by the end of it. And yeah, like, and I, okay, I will say part of this might be because the book was, has been massively hyped for years and years and years. Um, I was well aware of the hype by the time, um, by the time I got around to reading it and yeah, it just, it just didn't live up, especially with the ending for me. Sorry. I don't, I just didn't really like it. Sorry. Um, I, I would, I'm sure I would read another Aaron Morgenstern book. Uh, I think she's got something, something Starless Sea. She's got a book out recently within the last year with a title that is something like that. I can't quite remember. Um, maybe a song in the Starless Sea or something like that. Um, so maybe one day I would, I would give it a try. But right now I'm, I'm pretty much only reading like books that make me happy. So yeah, maybe one day we'll get there. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, let's see. We have, we have like eight minutes left. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any last minute questions, um, go ahead and drop them in the chat or, uh, in the little Q and A area. I'm not picky either way. Um, so yeah, but in the meantime, I will go ahead and I will do, um, a couple, maybe one or two more of these as well. But if I see, if I see y'all have a question in the chat I'll be sure to catch it um so yeah let's see here uh number eight on this on this list that DJ Gray submitted is a book that feels like it was written just for you Ooh. <laughs> um this this might kind of sound a little bit strange considering it's like in space and has aliens but um so Gail Carriker's um The Fifth Gender there, there are things in that book that I honestly haven't seen anywhere else. Um, number mainly in everything that I've ever seen, everyone has kids and it's kind of creates this subtext that like you're, you're weird or you're not quite like you don't, you're not quite complete unless you have children and want children. And I do not want children. I just, I just, it's not a thing I want for my life. Um, and so like, I've always, I've always got, been kind of tired of that, of like, there has to be children. Um, and I mean, kids are great. Kids are fantastic and imaginative and incredible, but I just don't want the responsibility of raising them. Um, so yeah. And then the fifth gender, like the characters and the two main characters in there, like they don't want kids. They just don't. And it just, honestly, it made me so happy. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, finally characters that like, don't feel like make it seem like you have to want children in order to be complete or normal or whatever. So honestly, like it just made me so happy. Finally, even I love Brooklyn nine, nine and even they have done this. And I feel like they're honestly one of the most inclusive shows on television right now. And even they have done this. Um, so yeah, and I, so that just honestly, like, I was so happy. I felt seen by that book. Like, yay, characters that don't want children. No offense to children, they're great. Just, it's a huge responsibility that I don't want for my life. So yeah, so there's that. Um, Only five minutes left. Like I said, if you guys have any last minute questions, drop them in. In the meantime, let's see here. Um... Like I said, DJ Greg sent me a whole mess of questions. So I'm just trying to pick out one that won't take very long to answer. <laughs> so let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. How about this? A book that was an interesting failure. Um, that That is, I feel like that's a loaded term, failure, because 
I think failure means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, so I'll say this, this book was a huge fail for me. Um, so the book is called Getting Rid of Mr. Kitchen. I don't remember who wrote it. <sighs> Honestly, I have no idea. Um, I picked this book up in um, a really huge bookshop when I was visiting Hay on Wye in Wales one year. Um, and I was just, oh, this looks sort of interesting. So basically this guy kills this other guy when he's in his apartment and he has to get rid of the body. And the entire book um, is basically him trying to get rid of this body and failing miserably, um, which I was on board for that. Like, that sounds kind of funny, um, even though, like, murder is bad. But the whole the whole situation, like, kind of, in a way, kind of made you feel not quite as bad about the murder. Kind of the way that, like, a cozy mystery kind of, like, soothes that. Like, either the murder victim is somebody that, like, nobody liked anyway. But anyway... So, like, I was on board for, like, the, oh, we have to get rid of the body kind of thing. But the main character was such a huge a-hole. Like, I did not care about this guy. I'm like, you know what? Get get caught. Get arrested. Go to jail. I don't care about you. You were just a huge a-hole. He was really sexist. Um, I, yeah, I just, I don't care. I didn't care about him succeeding. So, yeah. And, like, he was really horrible to, like, his parents. He was horrible to everyone. Um, but then they had this like weird part in the book where he's talking about like how like just kind of like the hierarchy of England and nobility and like landowning and all this like stuff that had nothing to do with the book. And it was like, but he was having this conversation while he was in a fist fight with somebody. I don't know. It was really weird. I don't really understand. Um, so yeah. And then at the very end, it uh, just kind of left you disappointed. And I was like, well, there's several hours of my life I'm never going to get back. So yeah, that book was a huge fail. Um, it honestly, I really liked the premise, like have to get rid of a body. But yeah, the rest of it just, it just all went downhill for me. Just, eh, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, that, that, there you go. That was that. Um, so, uh, yeah, it is currently 2.58 uh, according to my clock. Um, I think that's all the questions I'm going to go ahead and do for now. Um, I'm going to enjoy biscuits with this later because I have a whole, um, like in my little teapot that I made it, there's a little bit left. There's like one cup left. So I shall enjoy some biscuits with that later. Um, so yeah, well, anyway, thank you friends so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you guys coming. Um, for really appreciate all your questions. They were fantastic. Um, yeah. So, you know, just... Make sure to um, keep those coming if you have any. I'm open to talking about whatever. So yeah, this is this is like a this is a good space to talk about that. Um, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day, a great week, a great month. Until next time, take care. Bye.